Hey guys, and welcome back to another settings video. Now I know I've talked about settings before on the channel, but I recently made a video going over how I learned the breezy flick, and it made me realize there's one big thing I didn't mention in my last settings guide that is super important to learn, especially for new players. So today, I thought I'd talk more about that and go over my new updated controller keybinds. But before I get into this, the loyal subs will know that currently 98% of my viewers are not subscribed to the channel. So if you're a part of that group, please consider subbing if you like this video. It's completely free and you can always unsub whenever you want. Anyways, without any further wait, let's talk about controller settings in Rocket League. Okay. Before I get into controller keybinds, which is really going to be the focus of this video, I'm going to quickly throw up my camera settings and general controller settings because after all, this is a settings guide. Now if you're new to the channel and haven't seen my other videos, I've already actually uploaded two guides that go way more in depth with both camera settings and controller settings, so if you haven't seen those yet, I highly recommend you start with watching those before you finish watching this video. Now for those of you who are going to watch this video straight through, that's completely fine, but I I do want to say that the settings I use aren't necessarily perfect, so I wouldn't just copy down the settings that I just threw up on the screen. Instead, in those two other videos I give, I showed popular pro player ranges for these settings, so I think it's much better to test out different values in those ranges rather than just copying down what I use. Another thing I want to mention before I get into controller keybinds is video settings. Now a lot of people asked about my video settings in my last settings guide, and I know I didn't mention it, and that's because I wanted dedicate a video just specifically to this topic, but in case you guys want the short summary of my video settings, I'll also pop them on screen now in case you want to copy them down, and I'll link a card on screen once I make that more in-depth guide. Alright, with that out of the way, now let's talk about the real focus of this video, which is controller keybinds. First, I'll go over quickly some of my general tips for controller binds before I get into the new info that I mentioned at the start of the video. Now when it comes to controller keybinds, it's definitely not a one-size-fits-all sort of system, and binds are something that can totally vary from player to player. However, no matter what your binds are, they need to enable you to do a couple specific functions. And this applies even if you're a beginner, because some of these functions that I'm going to talk about are essential in learning advanced mechanics. And you're definitely not going to want to have to completely learn your controls once you realize your keybinds don't let you do high level mechanics. So it's best to get this stuff down right now out of the gates. Okay, the two main button press combinations your keybinds need to enable you to do is jump, boost, air roll, as well as jump, boost, and power slide all at the same time. Now this is because when you start doing quick aerials, special types of flicks, and tons of other high level mechanics, you're going to need to be able to press all these buttons at the same time. Like I said before, it's totally fine if the individual buttons, say boost, jump, power slide, vary from player to player, but no matter what your keybinds are, you're eventually going to need to make use of these specific functions, so make sure your keybinds allow you to do so. And whatever you decide on, just make sure you're not stacking all of these buttons right next to each other and making it impossible for you to click them at the same time. Another thing you want to avoid doing that I didn't mention in my other video is something called flat thumbing. Flat thumbing is when you use your right thumb to click multiple buttons at the same time. A clear example of this is with the default settings. If you use the default settings and have your jump button on A and boost on X, it's going to be really hard to click those buttons simultaneously using just your thumb without messing something up. So if you can, move your boost, jump, and power slide buttons to different parts of your controller. Personally, I have boost on left trigger, power slide and air roll on right bumper, and jump on A. That way, it's super easy for me to press them all at once. Keep in mind though, I use a special set of controls that only one other pro player named Pariso uses, where instead of having an accelerate and brake button, all I use is my left joystick to drive forward and backward. Now I really like these settings because they free up so many buttons on your controller, but I wouldn't recommend them to everyone because they're definitely unique and a little bit weird to get used to. If you want to test them out though, I'll throw them on screen now and you can give them a shot. Okay, with those general tips out of the way, I want to get into the real reason I'm making this video. Like I said earlier, when I was learning the Breezy Flick, I realized something crazy, and that is for over 1500 hours that I've been playing Rocket League, I haven't been using a directional air roll. 
Now, if you don't know, there are two ways to air roll in Rocket League. One way is through the plain air roll button, and the other is something called directional air roll. And for the longest time, I only used the plain button. The thing is, in order to use the regular air roll button, you have to hold down your joystick to select the direction you want to spin. But if you bind one of your buttons to a directional air roll instead, like air roll left or air roll right, you essentially free up your joystick, and all you have to do is click that single air roll left or air roll right button to start spinning midair. Now, I was talking a lot about this with two other small YouTubers who are basically experts on this topic, and they convinced me that it's super important to have a dedicated air roll bind, especially for new players. But rather than just tell you guys what they told me, today I've actually brought one of them on to explain directional air roll for themselves. So today I've invited Baby Bones, who makes tons of videos on this sort of thing, to talk about directional air roll. Say what's up. Hey, this is Baby Bones. What's going on, y'all? All right, I guess I'll just get into this, Bones. Why exactly is learning air roll left and air roll right so important? Well, if we're going to talk about directional air roll, we have to talk about spinning. Spinning in the air is important for two main reasons. The first reason is that spinning makes adjusting in the air more fluid. So you're using less boost, adjusting faster, and being all around more efficient in the air. The second reason is that when you do reach the ball, spinning is going to allow you to position better for your touch on the ball. And once you understand spinning, you might say, why can't I just spin with regular air roll? And you definitely can, but spinning with regular air roll limits you in two ways. First off, you have to waste your left stick adjustment by holding down both air roll and left on the left stick just to perform the same spinning motion you can get out of with one button. And secondly, you can't air pitch and air roll at the same time if you're just using regular air roll. With a directional air roll bind though, you can both spin and pitch your car with your left stick mid-air at the same time. This means you can now perform mechanics like tornado spins, cucks twists, and in general it gives you a little bit more freedom with complicated mechanics like double taps, flip resets, and air dribbles. Overall, if you want to perform at the highest level, you need a directional air roll bind. Wow, that was super in-depth. I didn't expect you to explain it that much. I, I don't even know what to say. I mean, you heard it here first, folks. Thanks for coming on, Bones. I really appreciate that. Yeah, thanks for having me on, Luke, and you guys can find me on YouTube at BabyBones with a Z, and on Twitter at SirBabyBones. Thanks again. Alright guys, I think it's safe to say you should all give directional air roll a shot if you don't use it already. Just like with anything though, learning new controls is going to take time, and consistency is super important. For me personally, I moved air roll over to my power slide button and just started using air roll left a week ago, and to be honest, it's still taking some time to get used to. So if you change your keybinds after this video, don't be discouraged if you're not playing at your best right away. If your controls follow these guidelines I set out earlier, I promise that if you stick it out, in the long term, you'll be thankful you made the switch. If you're still having trouble with anything to do with air roll though, definitely check out Paps or Bones because they make tons of great, helpful content on this stuff. Anyways though guys, that's about all for this video. But before the video ends, if you're new to the channel and don't know about the monthly giveaway I do, then this is the part of the video where I'll talk more about that. Basically, at the end of every month, I pick a random commenter on my videos to be coached to GC by me. Now normally I charge for coaching on my Patreon, but if your comment gets picked, I'll coach you until you hit Grand Champion rank in Rocket League completely free of charge. So if you want to enter for a chance to win that, all you have to do is leave a like and comment below with your rank in Rocket League. Thank you all so much for the support recently, it's been incredible. I can't believe how much we're growing just in the past month and, and I'm super excited to keep it going. That's all I've got though, so thanks so much for watching guys, and I'll see you all in the next one.